Hey everyone, hope you're doing pretty well. Today I'm here with Emil and this is King Jesus Podcast. How are you doing, Emil? I'm well, thanks. How are you? Good, man. Um, so we're starting a new series. Yep. I remember that we did Devotion before yes, this. And there were four episodes. We did get a lot of good feedback. So that was um, pretty encouraging that a lot of people were blessed through this. Mm. But today we're doing something new. We're doing a two-part series, and we're doing it in regards to what does it cost to carry the cross. Mm -hmm. Today's episode, the first one, we want to speak about what did it cost for Jesus to pick yeah. up his cross and die on it. Yeah. And on the second part, which I believe that's our responsibility, is what does it cost us to carry our cross and follow Jesus? Yeah. Yeah. But before we get to all this, mm -hmm. um, maybe some people are not familiar with what the cross is all about. So to you, in your experience, you know, what is your perspective of what the cross is? To me, um, for me personally, I see the cross as hope. I see the cross as a, a second chance um, because unfortunately our, our father, um, Adam, our ancestor, failed. And uh, we needed someone else to represent us because unfortunately we were cursed because of Adam and uh, he represented us. So we needed a new representative and in steps Jesus. And um, so through what Jesus did on the cross, we have salvation, we have hope, we have uh, a second chance if, if we believe in him, of course. Amen. So that's what it means to me. But that's great. Second about you? chances. Well, to be honest with you, um, it's something that's, as you said, it's, it's definitely the symbol of hope. Mm -hmm. It's that second chance that God has given humanity, right? Yeah. Um, he could have just brought in justice <clears throat> and said, well, I'm just going to punish everyone according to their sin which means we all go to hell, right? Yeah. Because we've all fallen short of God's glory. Yeah. But God decided to show mercy and at the same time to satisfy his justice. Yeah. So God couldn't just forgive sins for the sake of forgiving. Someone had to pay the penalty for our own wrongdoings. Yeah. And that's where Jesus comes in and steps in to take our place and says, I will take the punishment for them so they can receive the blessings that God has prepared for us Yes, in Jesus, of course. And as you were speaking about our father, Adam, he's also known to be the first Adam. Yes. So thank God he brought a second Adam. Jesus. And that's Jesus. The first Adam was a living human being. He sinned. And because of that sin, it brought death to the whole world. Mm -hmm. But the second Adam, he's a life given uh, Adam, which means that he came to give us life. He came to restore the, the problem that the first Adam brought into yeah. this world. So to, for you to say, the cross is about a second chance. It just fits at it perfectly yeah. to show that the first Adam stuffed up. Yep. The second Adam came to make everything right. Yes. Yeah. So the first Adam was disobedient and um, <laughs> the second Adam was obedient. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Especially, I mean, if you look at uh, the, the, the verse where it what tells you about what Jesus was doing before his ministry, because uh, he didn't start until he was uh, 33. 30. 30. Yeah, 30. he started his ministry at, 30. at the age uh, yeah. of 30. So 30. So from the ages of you know 1 to 29, what was he doing? And it says he was living obediently. Mm. He was obedient. Uh, who was he obedient to? Well, he would have been obedient to the law of Moses, to God, and he would have been obedient to his family. And um, he, he was obedient. And that's important. That's what we need to be. That's what we need to strive for. And... Um, he was perfect sinless and flawless. from the beginning yeah. yeah and and that's well that's what adam was in the beginning as well he was perfect he was sinless and when god saw what he had created he saw it was good 
Um, and Adam was good. He was perfect. There was no sin in him. And unfortunately, um, because of disobedience, he fell. And because he represents us, we all fell with him. And we've been sinning ever since. We've been doing the same thing Adam has been doing ever since. Because I know a lot of people say, well, how is that my sin? That was my forefather's sin, Adam, mm. right? Why am I yeah. being judged for what Adam did? And unfortunately, we know different from Adam. We're push, pointing the finger at someone else saying, oh, they're the ones that, that are for, oh, I didn't choose to do this. Well, yeah, you chose to sin. Mm -hmm. Um We've been doing every, we've been doing the same thing. There's no yeah. there's no difference. We see it's here now live. We see the way we act, the way we live, and yeah. So, it, in you saying that, mm -hmm. it just reminds me that before we knew what sin was, we were already living it out, yeah. right? Even as children, yeah. Um, we learn how to cheat. We learn how to lie. We need. We learn how to manipulate and so on. Yeah. It, it's just it's in our very core it's, it's in our nature. No, nature yeah but then when the second adam came and he died on the cross which we will get to yeah because that's that's what the topic is yeah and he was risen on the third day by us being in him we become a new creation we are born again yeah so we were born having the nature of the first Adam, but when we come to Jesus, we are born again and we adopt this new nature yes. of the second Adam. And that's why it's so important what Jesus done on the cross. It means so much to us, but unfortunately we get very comfortable with the message of the cross because we hear it almost all the time right yeah. sometimes the preacher will be preaching about it every sunday and it becomes more like blah 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 i've heard it before um could you give us something new but we don't recognize that it's not like when we are reminded of the cross and what jesus done on it it's not about the information that we're receiving is that we need to always recognize and remind ourselves what Jesus has done on the cross for yes. me on, on a daily basis Amen. to know that if it wasn't for Jesus, I would be he condemned. Yes. And that's what I like what Paul says in first Corinthians 15. Mm -hmm. And, and it was in regards to the resurrection, you know, Jesus died and then he was resurrected. He says, if Jesus wasn't resurrected, then your faith is futile, it's useless, and you still have your sins on you. Yes. But by the grace of God, we have this message of the cross. This is a message of hope in the church, and it's not only limited within the church. This message is needed very much outside the church. Of course. A lot of people need to hear this message today in regards to the love and the work of Jesus and what he has done on that cross. Yes. And not only did he die on the cross, he also defeated death in his resurrection. Amen. So we can get to this topic now mm -hmm. in regards as what did it take for Jesus to carry that cross? It's a heavy question. It's it's a it's a heavy cross. Um, so what did it take for Jesus to carry the cross? It took a lot of strength, a lot of uh, faith in the Father and um, perseverance, really, because you don't understand the shame of it all. Imagine your family, your friends, looking at you being stripped of your robes and being beaten and and spat on and you know whipped like you're a criminal like you're you're a thief like you're a thug and you're treated like one and you're laughed at and mocked and this is not even at the crucifixion yet we're not even talking there yet we're just talking just you know before the crucifixion just the steps leading to it and then they're let they let after all that after you're beaten you're you're bloodied literally your your skin is torn and shredded and everyone has mocked you these these people that have conquered your land these romans that have conquered your land and and you know taxing your people and they're they're it's a tyrannical government it's not a fair government 
and and these are the people that are beating you and mocking you and that after all that you stand before the people and then they let instead of you letting you go they let a murderer go and you're innocent you've done nothing wrong i mean th and that's just the first that's not even the crucifixion yet yeah that's just the steps leading to it and he's went through all that and keep in mind that you got people that love you that know that this is happening to you i, ca I can't fathom <laughs> the price of it all it and that's is. just the beginning that's not even the cross yet yeah well the wow. whole idea of of this whole journey to get you know um lashed to carry that cross to be stripped naked and be publicly displayed before everyone on that cross <clears throat> is that all of your dignity is stripped away yeah with your clothes yeah you know so it's not only what's happening on the outside right or the beating that the person is going through it's also what's happening to the person on the inside mm. that i'm no longer treated as a human being anymore yeah and for god who sits on the throne and decided to get up and come down and be incarnate take on flesh and to decide to take on that type of death that he's not even being treated like a human being i mean it's it's already degrading for god to take on flesh and become a man yeah let alone no longer being treated like, like a, a man. man and being you know as as people would see these things being treated like an animal you know someone who's worthless and let's be honest animals have more rights yeah that's what i was gonna say that has no rights to it it's it it definitely puts to perspective to what jesus has endured yeah to for his plan for him to take away our sin yeah and on top of that i mean we're looking we're looking at it from you know what's happening on the inside spiritually speaking it was more degrading yeah because if you look at 2 Corinthians 5, Paul saying at the end of the chapter that Jesus became sin. Yes. So we yeah. can become the righteousness of God. So not only was he beaten, stripped naked, and put on the cross, what was worse is that the Son of God yeah. became sin so we can become the righteousness of God jesus took our place if there is anything more degrading to god is for him to be in any shape or form connected to sin to sin because god hates it, it. it's so ugly yet he took it upon his flesh just for the sake of us and you see something like that and you think what did you see in me god yeah. for you to do such thing it's a reckless love isn't it it is it's 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 um it's something that's i, can, I cannot fathom it it's unfathomable it's something that's so like un, like we don't deserve it it's un, something that's it's unconditional there's no conditions to it there's no strings attached it's just and it's not it's non c there's no there's no price like that that can stop him I mean, he literally became had all the sins of every every single sin you can think of the worst ones was on him he's and Matt, look and if and if if there was a criminal that happened this happened to them you'd feel bad for them but this is an innocent person that has never sinned that's incapable of sin since you said that man i want to share from romans chapter 5 Please. because because you're saying we really don't deserve it and it's true yes. that's what we call grace it's a gift that we don't deserve and that's an unconditional love that god loved the world he gave his son there was nothing for the world to offer god for their sins we had nothing god had to do it himself but this is romans 5 verse 6 and onwards he's saying for when we were still with that strength in due time Christ died for the ungodly yeah. for scarcely for a righteous man will one die 
yet perhaps for a good man sometimes would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners. So Jesus is not dying for the righteous. He's not dying for the godly. He's not dying for the good men. He's, he, he's saying that while we were still Those sinners, died. Christ died for us. Yeah much more than have now been justified by his blood we shall be saved from the wrath through him yes and and that's the beauty of it in verse 10 he's saying for if when we were enemies we were reconciled to god through the death of his son much more having been reconciled we shall be saved his by his life Amen. It's such an amazing it verse is. to show God is not <clears throat> afraid to get his hands dirty. Amen. Yeah. He's like, if you're in the mud, like sometimes, you, you know, some of those jobs that you got to do. Yeah. Right. Um, and, and, and I just had one this week. Um, you know, my son was feeling sick. And he vomited over his bed, <laughs> over over the floor, over the carpet. Is he doing better now? He's doing much better, thank, thank God. God. But then, it was such a dirty job. Yeah. It stunk. It was gooey. It was messy. <laughs> but someone's got to do it. Yeah, someone. And, and I'm yeah. like, you know what? That's my son. I, I'm here to love my son. I'm here to serve him. Yeah. And that was my job to do it. Yeah. And then when you look at God, as much as he hates sin and, and something that, you know, angers him, he, he doesn't want it to be anywhere near him. He's like, if it takes for me to put that sin upon my son, just so I can save the people I love, I will do it. Yeah. And this is where we see that Jesus didn't only teach love your enemies he lived it out Amen. he showed his love for his enemies that he died for them yeah so when you look at the cost of the cross for jesus it's not just about beating which is horrible it's not about being treated like an animal or being stripped naked spiritually speaking he had to take the sin of man upon himself and out of all people, the Father poured his wrath on him. It pleased him to crush his own son. So imagine all the, the verses that come to your head where Jesus speaks about I and the Father are one. I come to please the Father. I love the Father. The, the Father loves me. And this beautiful unity between Jesus and the Father, yeah. when it gets to the cross... The father pours his wrath and it pleases him. It Isaiah pleases 53. Him. Yes. And Jesus took on that. Yeah. He took on that and said, I'm doing it for these people. The very people that are standing over there mocking, mocking. me. And like, imagine daring to be like, you know, if you think you're the son of God, just, just come down. Wow. Show us who you really are. And Jesus could have done that. But then he knew that if he left the cross, there wouldn't be any forgiveness of sin. He had to overlook that. And he was still, he was still spreading, you know, his love to people. To Father, even, Father, forgive them. Yeah. And also to one of the, um, one of the sinners that were crucified with him. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, his mercy knows no bounds, even when he is bound, literally and nailed on a cross his mercy is still there it's it's amazing and, and 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 to answer the question what it cost what it cost heaven it cost heaven its most important treasure mm. that's what it cost and god gave it willingly mm. god gave his only begotten son just imagine because you know we have a lot of passages in regards to the plan of salvation being even a mystery to the angels in heaven yeah. just imagine the angels in heaven as they were watching that moment curious and they're like this is the god 
that we feared and we've been worshipping since the beginning and he's getting mocked right in front of our eyes yet he's not even saying a word <laughs> imagine that like uh, if i was there I'd be like i want i want to pr protect my master like uh, this can't be but then in his death <clears throat> and then three days later he's resurrected then everything yeah. becomes clear it, it's 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 i mean i'm just like when you said it it just made me think and how ridiculous that situation would have been for the angels oh like, yeah i mean i'm sure there must have been something holding them back from just destroy because one one angel can destroy an army of hundreds of thousands how many yeah. angels are there just looking yeah. at this uh, they would have been devastated but then imagine the celebration when jesus you know rose from the dead yeah and sin was defeated and it is done yeah it's finished the, the bible does i mean it does touch to it when uh, judas comes betraying jesus and jesus saying you know i i can i can command angels to come and protect me yeah you know but that wasn't the case i mean those angels might be thinking jesus just give us a word yeah we're, we're gonna come and then jesus gets lashed like jesus give us the word and then jesus picks up the cross jesus give us the word like why is this happening to our own creator and then they see him die on the cross it's so hard it's so hard yeah. like and, and not only him you, you had his mother there mary you had some of the disciples there yeah and for a very dear friend for me to see a dear friend go through that it's tough let her learn for them especially like peter confess him jesus you are the son of god yeah and peter might be thinking what is going on here what is going on and going back to the beginning of the video you gave an explanation you said to me the cross is a symbol of hope yes it's a symbol of a second chance yes and we just spoke about how terrifying the cross was absolutely yet jesus changed it into hope, hope. yeah yeah, because um, many people don't understand the pain of crucifixion. And I can't go into too much detail because the video might be age-restricted. But uh, I'll give a plain description. Um, it's incredibly difficult to breathe because the, the fluids inside your body start compressing on your heart. And, you know, it, and it's not a quick death. It takes days. Sometimes even up to five days, six days, even a week. And sometimes they have to break the legs to make it, you know, quicker yeah so um, you can't pull yourself yeah. to breathe and then you just your heart literally just implodes no explodes implodes um surrounded by pretty much fluid uh from your blood it's been kind of all the red blood cells have been moved away and that's why when you pierce someone it looks like it's water it's just there's no more red blood cells in the yeah you know, it, it, it or hemoglobin I, I believe it's called um it, it's 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 ridiculous how painful it is and that's where the word excruciating comes from it comes from the word crucifixion and and this was an example for everyone not to go against the romans this was like not a it was not a normal death it was a political death it was a, it was a it was a symbol of what it means to cross the romans and it was a warning to everyone so imagine that the cross was a warning not to go against the, the romans it was a symbol of death punishment and a symbol of hopelessness of what it means to go against your tyrannical uh, rulers overlords mm -hmm. and jesus like you said changed that into hope into what the gospel into the message that we're preaching right now which is we are saved by what jesus did on the cross we are saved by him and that's where our hope is that's where our our joy is is in the in what jesus did on the cross it's on it's and it's not a, it's not a cross that's you know that's pretty no it's got blood on it it's got his pieces of his flesh on it it's but that's what saved us and it's been turned into a symbol of hope just imagine that it's 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 crazy yeah 
looking at it from our perspective because someone might be watching this mm. and they might be thinking well i don't deserve this no because i'm a very i've got a very ugly life and i would like to encourage you if you're listening to this and that's how you're feeling about it if jesus could turn a symbol that is so ugly and terrifying into a symbol of hope which is what the cross is yes. jesus can turn your life around the yes. same way he could take away the ugliness of your life your sin your past and he can make you into something new and that's what we have in jesus Amen. we don't only have the forgiveness of sins but we also have the adoption Amen. that we can become children of god right. through jesus that's what I like the beginning of the book of Hebrews, yeah. where it speaks about Jesus when he took on flesh and blood, says that the Bible says that he, he was not ashamed to call us brethren. So this whole idea that not only did Jesus get his hands dirty with us, he, he didn't come and say, you know what, I'll deal with your problem, which is sin, I'll get rid of it, and then I'll move away. Okay, I'll go do my own thing. No, Jesus came, says, not only do I want to get rid of your filth, yeah. your sin, but I also want to be involved in your life. And I want to be, I want you to be a family member to me. Amen. I want you to be adopted and to be into my house. And my father becomes your, father. your own father. Yeah. That's the beauty of adoption. It's amazing. And we could not have it without the cross. No. Because God would not take, he would not father children that don't have his very own nature. No. If you do not have a life of holiness, and I'm not speaking in the sense of our own holiness, that we live an obedient life. I'm speaking about this perfection. Yes. That only happens by justification in grace. And the only way that we can receive that is through faith. Amen. So by faith, by believing in the work of Jesus Christ, by receiving and confessing Jesus as our Lord and as, as our Savior, yeah. we have life. That's very important for us yes. to know. It's not your works that could make you right with God. It's what the works of Jesus that was done on the cross and his very own resurrection that gives us this hope that we can say by Jesus death on the cross my sins have been forgiven and forgotten yeah it's so important it is it is it's not it's not something that you can cuz I, I i know there's a uh, there's some some people that just keep going back to what they've done even though they in their heart it's telling them is you've been forgiven you've but their brain is saying, but remember this, remember this. And I, I believe that most of the time this is an attack from the devil just to remind you of how pathetic and unworthy you are. And, um, well, there's a story about uh, a monk that, it's a story we don't know who it's about really. Um, some people say it's about Martin Luther, some people say it's about mm. whoever, um, where uh, the devil in his, uh, in his dream was writing all his sins on a wall. And he was looking at every single sin he's ever committed. And at the end, Jesus wrote, oh, sorry, he wrote, paid by the blood of Jesus. Mm. At the end of all that, everything that the devil had wrote, written, all the sins, and he just said, paid by the blood of Jesus. And when you're reading Romans 5, if you kept going, it talks about how in Adam we are all condemned and how Jesus is that second check. So we, we already talked about it. And in, in verse 20 and 21 of Romans Five, Roman 5 uh, it says the law was added so that the trespass might increase but where sin increased grace increased all the more so that just as sin reigned in death so also grace might reign through righteousness to bring eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord so this is grace and and this is very important it's not about what you do it's not about what you've done it's not about what you're going to do it's grace grace is something that's undeserving it's something that you didn't have to work for to get it's something that god has given you because he is grateful 
because he is merciful because he is loving and he's giving you this unconditionally all you have to do is accept him as your lord and savior it's not about what you've done it's about what he's already done is he your king if he's your king then his kingdom is eternal and you're part of his kingdom that means you're eternal yeah right but if he's not your if he's not your king then you're his enemy and you can't be in his kingdom and if you're not in his kingdom nothing else lasts so unfortunately you cannot last it's very simple it's not about what you and i have done because you and i are not perfect yeah you and i have sins that we don't like and we might even not want anyone to know about but jesus paid for them there were every sin that we've done every sin that be, even before during after jesus every single sin was on him and every single sin was on that cross and his blood his blood wiped it all out all of it forgotten gone and forgotten past present future gone my brothers and sisters in humanity and in christ i say this to you it's not about what we do it's about what jesus did so please please give your life to jesus come before the cross it is for everyone it's not just for the jew it's for the gentile it's for everyone and john three sixteen, for god so loved the world that whoever believes in him shall have everlasting life and not perish yeah he gave his only begotten son yeah. it's it's so important and um in, in saying all this we're, we're not advertising for you to go and live a life of sin yeah just because you were justified by faith because in the very next chapter because we read romans yeah. 5 romans 6 verse 1 says what shall we say then shall we continue in sin that no. grace may abound no. verse 2 saying certainly not so it's very important we have an opportunity yes. to let go of our past and have a new life in jesus Amen. and that's very important for us yes do you have any closing comments um well uh, i think we've covered most of it and uh, as for the second the last part you just mentioned i think we'll be going over more about what it means to be a christian yeah. and what and what it means for us to carry our cross because <laughs> the first part uh we just explained what what the burden of the cross was to jesus and why he did it and uh what it means for us but now um we we have to get ready to talk about the second part which is uh it, what we have to do yeah cool <laughs> cool yeah so um hopefully you've enjoyed this yes. and we'll get to see you for part two and part two is to do with what does it cost us to carry our own yeah. cross uh, the bible does speak about not only did jesus carry his cross but we're also called to carry um. our own cross so god bless you all and we'll see you in the second part take care